potentially unlikely candidate. Replacement for an RS6, maybe. Now, love the RS6, don't get me wrong, it's not going anywhere any anytime soon. Uh, however, on the AMG event uh, at Silverstone a few weeks ago, I was able to experience the E63S 4Matic, which I am in right now. Absolutely blown away with that. One of the sort of USPs and things that sells me on the RS6 is its Quattro all-wheel drive system, but Mercedes have now launched their own 4Matic system, and this is the S. Had a very early drive in one, as I mentioned a few weeks ago. Sounds amazing, handles incredible, traction after the Apex is insane. Um, and the whole thing as well, with it being a very modern car, is incredibly up to date. Interior, stunning. Yeah, serious contender. Also, Mercedes are one of the few that have been able to nail the turbocharged sound. Obviously their original C63 has always sounded fantastic when they were naturally aspirated, but even as a turbo system, they sound fantastic. Pop and bang on the overrun. 612 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque, a true tarmac terrorist. Okay, conveniently, while I'm on the AMG stand, we have before me the platform, the foundation of the AMG Project One. Uh, just to look at this thing is a marvel. This is what it's all about. It's the direct transplant Formula One engine that has been in the Mercedes F1 car since 2014. Uh, if you're a Formula One fan, you'll know this thing has been dominating F1. The power this thing puts out is crazy. They are restricting the revs on this to 11,000 RPM. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound like a restriction, but the actual uh, Formula One spec revs to 13,000 RPM. Also seen a few people asking me what the two smaller pipes are on the exhaust system. You'll notice there's got a single uh, F1 inspired exhaust output, but there's these two little pipes here which sit underneath it, which are actually uh, directly for the turbo wastegates. Very cool. Um, I heard Lewis Hamilton start up this car on stage last night. It sounds absolutely unbelievable. Okay, back in familiar territory. Uh, this is a car I did not expect to launch at Geneva. This is the GT3 Touring Pack. At first, it looks like a D-winged Gen 2 GT3, which you'd be forgiven for thinking so. However, this actually uh, relies on a lot of ground effects. There's, there's uh, quite a lot more downforce in this car than there is in the 911R. As soon as this thing hit the internet, uh, there was lots of people saying, oh, you know, 911R is it gonna be so annoyed. As with Porsche, it's a different proposition. It's basically a very slightly softer GT3. The suspension and damping is slightly softer because the aero is different, but inside is slightly more refined in that it is a cloth package. Beautiful place to sit. And of course, it's only available in manual, which kind of gets my juices flowing. It's such a short throw box. It's, you know, it's Porsche. It's a, a Porsche box. Of course, down there, pedal placement, perfect for heel toe. Clutch feels light. I'm wondering why you would opt for this over a manual GT3. It might predominantly just be an aesthetic thing. No wing, perhaps spec it in a darker color than this. I think this is sapphire blue, which is stunning. You could spec it and it could be a real sleeper. This is something that I'd love to have the dilemma to choose. Okay, arguably a car a lot of people have been waiting for. Finally, a rear wheel drive only Audi R8. It's called the Audi R8 V10 RWS. Regardless of that, it's rear wheel drive. Still, the 540 horsepower engine that we all know and love mated to the fantastically slick gearbox. Let's face it, there's only one word that has developed this car and that's fun. Audi has played so much on their heritage around the Quattro system that I think it's actually really bold that they've just taken out that front diff and gone to hell with it, let's have some fun. This thing is gonna be a drift weapon and I think you should give these guys a round of applause for that because Frankfurt at the minute is saturated with the notion of autonomous driving, electric cars uh, and for Audi who are pioneers in that area, 
for them to launch something like this is fantastic. Uh, you'll be able to tell one of these on the road because the side blade, the lower side blade, uh, will be painted the same color as the body and also likely the guy driving it will be going sideways. So yes, this is a car I would maybe not want to buy but definitely want to try. Gearbox is amazing, naturally aspirated V10, sounds incredible. Actually, maybe I do. It sounds like a recipe for awesomeness. Well done, Audi. Just quickly, the new Audi RS4. Very exciting, but it got me even more excited for the future of the RS6. Another car that we've all arguably been waiting for a revamp for for a very long time. This is the all new Bentley Continental GT, a platform that's been around for the best part of 10 years. My first experience with the Continental GT was on the Gumball Rally in 2011. I drove from London to Istanbul, and it was actually a convertible, and that week made me a Bentley convert. I, it was, I had one of the most amazing driving experiences in it, and the car was fantastic. The brand has evolved so much since then, uh, and here we are in their very latest version. Now, this one, thankfully, has launched with their flagship engine, the 6-liter W12. To put that into a bit of context, it's running 900 newton meters of torque. I mean, they're gonna have to have someone relaying the tarmac behind you to go along with this thing because the torsional power is next level. Interior quality, you know, Bentley have always been famous for having a beautiful driving environment. I would say they have elevated this to another degree. Being in here, I don't want to step out of it. Stunning, uh, every touch point, it feels like they've elevated it. So 626 brake horsepower, but the big thing that I'm excited about, if you've watched this channel regularly, you'll know that I'm a gearbox snob and Bentley have gone and upgraded the gearbox to a twin clutch system. Very happy about that. Extremely excited to get behind the wheel. This is a proper grand tourer, but in terms of a luxury environment with the crunch miles, this is, this is well up there. Yeah, so uh, pretty uh, casual experience. Just got dropped off at the uh, well, hall number five <laughs> by a tune buggy. <laughs> I love this show. Ferrari are on it right now. 812 super fast drops at Geneva earlier in March, and now the all new California T replacement, the Portofino. And aesthetically, I'm so happy. I was never a big fan of the aesthetics of the California or California T. I always felt they were a little bit soft. I've heard a lot of chat online of people comparing this to a sort of downscaled 812 that you can take the roof off. I mean, if that doesn't tick as many boxes as you want, I don't know what does. It looks amazing. I have to say that the pictures don't do this car justice. And we've got some proper upgrades as well. New intakes, new con rods, new manifolds, we got an uplift over the California T of 40 brake horsepower, taking it to 560 pound-feet of torque and 592 brake horsepower. Now, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know that I am currently on the hunt for something you could just take the roof off. Obviously, I haven't driven this yet, but aesthetically and as a platform, this thing is really appealing. I never thought that I would say that I would consider owning the California. This is its replacement and I think an indicator of what a fantastic job they've done is the fact that I'm even considering one. Uh, yeah, well done Ferrari. Really looking forward to getting behind the wheel of this. So an invite to the press drive would be great please Ferrari. Um, yeah, I'd love to share with you guys what it's all about. Big tick. If you think about Ferrari as an overall brand, there's not many people that offer a car for every occasion and do it as well. If you think of their lineup, you've got the phenomenal Super GT, which is the 812 Superfast, a more conventional supercar layout with the 488 GTB, convertible now with all new Portofino, and your practical daily car from the GTC4 Lusso. Yeah, they've really upped their game. Super exciting brand to be part of. Lots more to come. Okay, this last one's a bit of a curveball, and I'm probably not planning on buying one. However, the more time that I spend on the commutes and journeys, not for driving indulgement, just to go to meetings, just general traveling, the more I wish that I had a lovely, comfy lounge in which to go about it, just to edit in, spend time catching up on emails. This thing is arguably the ultimate place to do that. 
all the details, all the uh, accessories depends on your selection. Mm -hmm. For example, you don't uh, want to use coffee machine, we can put here uh, some bar or something else. Okay. Uh, also, we have a refrigerator here. Wow. 25 liter. <laughs> Amazing. Well, as much as I'm a sort of diehard petrol head and mm -hmm. I love driving, the commutes that I do on a regular basis, I'm often just stuck in traffic, I can't catch up on work, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm editing a lot. In an environment like this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. For example, on the road, uh, you want to see the where are you going? We have also, for example, if you want to see the road, <laughs> that's it goes down. Wow, that's mad. You guys have thought of everything. How long does it take to build one? This will be about two, two and a half months. Two and a half build, months? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's not too bad considering the amount of customization and work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have also here <laughs> sliding tables. One here as well, for Ferka yeah, Beers. And it's carbon fiber now then. Yes. yes. <laughs> Look at that, perfect for editing on. Man, you're making me consider one of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so So, a little bit of information for you while I do the one mile hike between here and the, the next hall to check out some other cars. The Frankfurt Auto Show takes place every two years. It's not an annual event. The reason for that is it is absolutely monumental. I've been invited down this year by Mercedes. I've got to say a massive thank you to them, particularly for giving me a preview of the AMG Project One last night. But let me just take you down here and give you a, an idea of the scale of these stands. So like stands are sort of, doesn't really do it any justice really. Um, they have been constructing this showroom since June. It's basically a three, three to four month project and they've taken three stories of the uh, conference center. It's absolutely huge. Check it out. So, last night down there, this is where the Project One was launched. You can see it just there. Um, actually, top down view for me is one of my favorite angles of the car. You can see so much sculpture. Look at that. Look how layered the rear wheel arches are. It's ridiculous. So down there, this is where everyone sat on these benches. Launched the cars. Very, very cool. Big show. Lewis Hamilton came out. Very, very cool. Tier two. Accessories, dining, look at concepts, electric drive, things like that. Tier three, we have the AMG division over here. It's absolutely huge. And that's, that's one of the reasons why it's, it's every two years, because the undertaking for such a show is monumental. Moving all the way over to the other side of the stand, because they've taken out this, look, this whole vast auditorium. Of, look at the lighting rig up there, next level. Anyway, all the way on the other side, they have an auditorium here, bit of a, conference place for presentations and then at the back the more practical utility vehicles which by the way this x-class looks the business i'm not you know if you watch this channel regularly you'll know i'm not exactly a pickup truck kind of guy but these are really looking good Thanks for watching, see you next time, ciao!